Hey, what's up guys? We're back over here at the uh, Vertex machine shop. I had done a video on this a little while back. Video tour, this is in my local town. It's a local job shop. And uh, so we're gonna take a look at a project I'm working on. If you haven't already seen it, go back and check my previous videos. I've got a full shop tour on this, showing all the machines in detail. But today we're going to look at a specific project on a specific machine. All right, while Mark's getting the stock set up there for us, I was going to show you this. I just put up a video a day or two ago showing these tubes being welded. It was a quick little video. I didn't do a lot of explanation in it, but we've got these little in canal pads that I TIG welded on there. And so we've got a series of holes that are going to get drilled. And I, I did this project a year ago and I did it manually on my machines. So I thought maybe this would be a good opportunity to uh, mark over here at Vertex has got this easy track Bridgeport machine that is a CNC machine. So we're gonna CNC machine these, or CNC drill these holes in there to hopefully speed up the process. So Mark's just now getting set up to get a stop so we can set a stop up and then we're gonna walk through the rest of it. That's your jog right there then. Is this the uh, land close enough? Yeah, yeah, that's yep. Good a starting point as any. Okay. Well, zero X there. So zero and X, X. Now, right there. What's your distance on Y? Or is it critical or just center of that? Center of it, yeah, it's not it's not critical. Okay. Tell me what I think you got it. Right there? Well, actually, if you go off and hit that, there's a line right there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, okay. Okay. That would give I us a better, yeah. a more consistent. So now you, well, you already, We've you've already, already set X. your X, so you can, oh, there you go, yeah. Tell me where. That's good. Right there? But go a little bit to the inside of it, because I think I consistently hit the inside of it when I was doing my welding. That way. No, to this way. Yeah. Yeah. You want me to move the like right there? A little more. Just right on the inside of the line. A little more. That'll work. Okay, we'll see real wide. Now right. it just moves. I'm gonna move it to it should be right at the start now. Right there. Now let's see where you're at. Yeah. But I, I think when I was welding this, because I was welding this way, I, I went inside of the line on almost all of them consistently. You want, you want so let's cheat it. it yeah, let's cheat it in a little bit more. It's all ready. So how about right there? Yeah, that looks good. Right there? Yep. Okay. Well, reset Y. So you re, so you're setting a zero right there on Y. Okay. All right. Now. All right, well, let's do it this way. Okay, we know we're on zero, so let's just, just go down to the last one on X. Say right there. Does that look pretty good? Yeah. 
Uh, take it this way, just yeah. Maybe, maybe. Now tell me where. No, uh, I think you got it. Back to zero. All right, we're going to do vent drill a row seven. Okay, we're starting at zero zero. The depth this is point two, is close enough. Okay, we are going x to a minus. Zero, and we're drilling ten holes. All right, now we can go to another program and it'll tell us the, the feed and the speed for ink and all. Yep. for the start of the hole, huh? Because that, that center is a little bit bigger than my drill bit, so. Look at that, please. All right. All right, let's move these for... Uh, four, five, Sitting. <laughs> we'll let the parks do some sitting. So let's talk about the button there real quick and just what it does. Well, to get the program started, you gotta start here. Okay. But then after that, it says you can take a little hole here. Now we just use this remote. We don't want to come down too hard on that pink nail. It may break our tilt. So you're hitting that remote to advance it. Yeah. And the and it's running the program and going the exact distance. They are equally spaced. Change we'll, the tool. And we'll put the tool in and then we won't change the tool again. So what we'll do now is to make sure we get these right, we're going to
one pack just to make sure it's in the hole and then going yeah. on through. Yeah. You don't want to jam down in there. All right, guys. Well, you saw Mark getting me uh, set up there, getting the machine dialed in, and using the conversational part of the Easy Track. Now, this Easy Track machine will support G code, you know, from uh, a G code creator, some CAM program, whatever you have that's got a post processor for this particular machine. But uh, once we got that going, you can see I'm zipping through them pretty quick. Uh, that's the first one done. Now, I elected to, to center drill each one first, and then you see me swap out the tool there. Now coming out, coming back and drilling the through holes and uh, using that remote to index it each time and then swap out the tube and go to the next one. Now, I had a total of 40 tubes to do with, uh, I'm sorry, 80 tubes to do with 10 holes in each one. So do the math on that. It's 800 total holes. And um, so... Um, and Mark was nearby. I had to call him over a couple times to uh, show me a couple things on the, you know, navigation. But once I got up and going, uh, I was able to get through it. And I worked there until about five o'clock that day and got most of them done. I think I got about six or seven hundred of the holes drilled there. Um, and then after that, I was back at my shop the next day. And rather than drive back into town, I just used my machine. And you see how I was using the. Uh, the little uh, baby bridge port mill to drill the holes in a similar kind of way, probably not quite as accurate as the CNC machine, but I thought you guys might enjoy this video, uh, seeing the job shop in town and the two axis uh, bridge port easy track machine doing its thing. And uh, in a second here, I want to show you the carnage from the day and how many drill bits I broke and, and all that. We'll show you that and then get it wrapped up. The video you just saw was from last week, and since that time, I've, I've continued to work on this project. And these are the tubes, uh, you know, that are cut on a bias like this. And uh, here's a quick look at what it looks like, and you see the holes if you come in here tight, camera girl. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to do is get these holes top and bottom lined up the best we can. And um, you see we got pretty good alignment there. And there is some adjustability but when I do the final assembly on this, the lower set of holes and the in the upper set of holes um and this these in canal pads are on top of eight inch thick uh stainless and that just gives us some extra wear time without that in canal on there these holes get opened up because of the extreme heat that this particular device goes through and that's all i can show you on that the other thing i wanted to show you is you know when i bid this project i budgeted <clears throat> all this into it and i think there's about 14 uh these are cobalt stub length drill bits, uh, a number 51 and a number 47, uh, 60 thousandths and 70 thousandths respectively. The lower holes and the upper holes get the different ones. But this is a Keo brand, which I've had really good luck with, carbide center drill. And you can see I broke both of the tips on that. And every one of these uh, drills got broke. You can see that one's broken off. You can see that in the camera. Uh, some of them... You know, a couple times, like, I don't have my glasses on, but you can see this one got work hardened. You got you can see the end of it's kind of uh, rolled over there. And um, so that that was the carnage. This is about $60 worth of drill bits, but this is a, you know, a fairly sizable project. So overall in the scope of the project, no big deal. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next video.